Arriving to class by boat is your only option at Ohio State's Island Campus. Located on Lake Erie, Stone Lab conducts year-round research and hosts hands-on summer classes. Let's check it out. Yes, Stone Laboratory is a very unique asset to Ohio State University. This is the oldest freshwater biological field station in the country. We started in 1895. We moved here in 1925. This building was built in 1925, and we've been doing regular college courses up here every summer since then, with research going on up here year-round. Lake Erie is the southernmost, the shallowest, and the warmest of the Great Lakes. Biologically, we are the most productive. In fact, we produce more fish for human consumption from Lake Erie than from the other four Great Lakes combined. So if you're gonna study biology or if you're gonna work on water quality, this is the place to do it. Stone Lab offers many of the ology classes, limnology, which is a study of inland waters, fish ecology and ichthyology that studies fish, herpetology that studies reptiles and amphibians, uh, botany that studies plants, entomology that studies insects, and we um, do fish identification labs, bird walks, invertebrate surveys, really give people a sense of the entire food chain here at uh, Lake Erie. This year we're looking at a lot of water snake goby interactions, um, doing some maximum prey experiments in the laboratory right now, um, some digestive trials. This is a round goby. Pretty, pretty big guy. It's called Gobzilla. And these are the guys who have kind of invaded uh, Lake Erie. And they outcompete every other fish. They have explosive reproduction. Reproduce like six times a season. So Lake Erie water snake can go out and forage and come up with basically a goby every single time it goes out and forages. I think it's the first, um, first evidence of an invasive helping to save an endangered species. So it's pretty interesting ecological interaction. So we're on North Bass Island right now, and uh, among all of the islands with our lowest snake population density site. And so to try to help increase our survey numbers for, for this island, we have these artificial, we call them snake mats, out, all over the island. We put out 30 mats all along the shoreline. And they kind of attract the snakes because they're, they're uh, dark and black, and so they heat up real fast, and it makes it a lot easier to find the snakes, usually, when it's a little more sunny out. My study is figuring out how well these mats work in, in catching snakes over here. And I'm taking the temperature of the top of the mat, under the mat, and next to the mat, of every mat that we see, and record how many snakes that we catch, if any. So this is a neonate water snake, probably born like last August, early September. And this one's got a very distinct banding pattern. Usually in the water stage you'll see, it's not the case, you don't see any of that banding that you see right there. So that's a baby. And Sean's experiment, the research, is to check to see if there's any prey in it. What you're gonna do right now, and basically all you do is you gotta take your fingers and you work up its belly, and you see if you feel a hard spot anywhere in it. And if you feel one, it's got food in there. You know, on main campus, you learn about these things um, that are going on in the environment, different interactions between organisms. But uh, you come up here, you're outside learning about these things. It makes you really want to learn the material because you're seeing how it's applied in nature. And um, I've also had experience with that with the scuba diving as well. Um, just seeing some of the fish interactions and uh, just some of the stuff you'd never see on main campus. One of the big things that I really noticed is you bond a lot more with your professors, your teachers up here, because you know the class sizes are smaller. Some one of the classes I know is only four people. Um, you eat dinner with your professor, you eat lunch with your professor, you eat breakfast with your professor. You're going on field trips with them. It's an awesome experience. There's nothing else like it. It's really inspiring when you're working on research and actually go out and take samples and be right here in the field. Lab work is fun, but the field work is so cool because I can just go out a few feet from my front door and study what I need to. It's this beautiful place, great scenery, um, pleasant to be around. People pay big money to live here. 
and uh, it's a slice of paradise and it's a valuable treasure for the people of Ohio and, and for the region. We really want the impact that Ohio State University has from this laboratory to be as broad as possible. And so some of our work is in Conneaut and Ashtabula and Cleveland, and, or, or we're working on a project in Lorraine, or we're at Old Woman Creek in Huron, or we're in Sandusky Bay, or we're at, at Toledo, or we're down in the Maumee River and we're concerned about agricultural runoff. Those are all issues that we have the capability through the Sea Grant program and this laboratory to address. There are also issues that Ohio State has the expertise within its faculty to work on those problems and solve those problems, and that's what we try to do. That's our show for today. From The Ohio State University, I'm Chris Forbes. Thanks for watching.